My name is Robert McNeil. I'm a Mohs surgeon in the section of dermatology at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. Mohs surgery is a specialized surgical technique that we use to remove skin cancers from the head and neck. It's a technique that allows us to ensure that we've given you the highest possible cure rate for any of the skin cancer that we've removed on the day of your surgery. There is often much more cancer than what you can see with the eye. It's analogous to an iceberg. We can see the top and sometimes the middle portion of the cancer, but often these cancers have roots that spread uh, beyond what our eyes see. By looking under the microscope and following these microscopic roots, we're able to remove the entirety of the cancer uh, by mapping and following only where the skin cancer extends into the skin. The procedure starts first thing in the morning, typically between 7.30 and 8.30 in the morning. You'll come in, you should have eaten a full breakfast, taken all of your medications. The nurse will bring you back to one of our procedure rooms, which looks like a small operating room. Can I just have you verify your full name for me, please? Uh, Loretta Smith. And your date of birth? 4-16-61. Okay, can you just verify for me what you're here for today, where? Uh, the spot on my head. And what were we doing to that today? Most surgery. At that time, we will talk a little bit about the procedure. We'll talk about the risks and benefits. And then we will get you prepared for the procedure, which involves cleaning the site where the skin cancer is on your face or on your neck. And then we will numb that area with a local anesthetic. You're going to feel me pushing and pulling on your skin. I'm going to remove that sample of skin from your forehead now. During the Mohs surgery procedure, I will first remove any skin cancer that I can see with my eye. This is typically done via cutting with a scalpel or scraping with a round blade called a curette. Then to find out if the cancer has microscopic roots, I cut a thin bowl-shaped layer of skin from around the hole where I originally removed the visible cancer. This sample is sent to the lab for processing. If any of the cancer has spread beyond what's already been removed, I will be able to see it under the microscope. In the lab, skin is cut into several pieces, and each piece is marked with ink so I know exactly where the skin was before it was removed. This is a way of mapping the skin so if we find any cancer under the microscope, we know exactly where to find and remove the remaining cancer-containing skin. The process of preparing the skin samples generally takes one to two hours. The skin samples come back to me on a microscope slide. I'll look under the microscope and see if there's any skin cancer remaining in any of the sections of skin that we removed. If cancer is seen under the microscope, I mark its location on the map we've made of the skin we've removed. Then we'll bring you back into a room remove the bandage, and take skin from the area where I saw the skin cancer under the microscope. The lab will prepare this new sample and I again will check to see if there's any skin cancer remaining. This process is repeated until no more cancer is seen under the microscope. In most cases, it takes one or two rounds to remove the entire skin cancer, but at times it can take up to three, four, and five rounds, which can be an all-day procedure to entirely remove the skin cancer. So while the skin is being processed in my lab and placed on a microscope slide. My nurse will put a temporary bandage over the area where we are working. And at that time, you will have a choice to either stay in the room at which you can read a book or listen to some music, or you can go to the waiting room and visit with family or friends who may be there the day of the procedure with you. Once we finish getting the skin cancer out, there will be a small defect or hole where the skin cancer was. And this is where we restart the repair process. The repair process entails putting that hole back together to make you look like you. It varies depending on the size of the hole and how much how large the skin cancer was and how many layers we had to do. It can be anything from a very small line which most of us think of as a scar to a larger repair where we need to borrow skin from areas elsewhere on the face, head or neck. Oftentimes we can find skin that we can use in the smile lines on the cheek in front of the ear, behind the ear, or sometimes on the neck or shoulder area. The wound generally requires routine bandaging, and routine bandaging is a procedure of applying generally an ointment and a non-stick bandage with some gauze and tape. And my nurses generally review this pretty good detail after the procedure. Most surgery is a completely outpatient procedure done under local anesthetic. So we ask all of our patients to take all of their medications as prescribed, uh, to eat a normal breakfast the day of the procedure, and patients are not kept in the hospital overnight for this procedure. Often you may be there from early in the morning till later in the evening, but it's generally not an overnight procedure. In terms of recovery, most people can expect to have some bruising, some swelling, and some discomfort for one to two weeks after their procedure. Over the next one to six months, people can expect to have less redness, less swelling, and a scar that eventually 
fades and becomes much less noticeable. Immediately after the procedure, it will require some bandaging again for about one to two weeks. During the procedure, the nurse goes over the bandaging procedure, and this is specialized based on what type of repair and uh, how much skin had to be removed during the procedure. So most surgery carries the same risks as any skin surgery. So anytime we cut the skin uh, during surgery, there's gonna be a little bit of bleeding. There's a low risk of infection, generally uh, one to two percent. And there's also gonna be a scar. Um, most patients do not realize that during their procedure, the scar is gonna be much larger than the spot that they came in with, with the skin cancer they came in with. The cure rate for basal cell skin cancer, squamous cell skin cancer, which are the most common skin cancers, uh, we are at or exceed the national average of about 98 to 99%. Dartmouth-Hitchcock does approximately 1,000 to 1,500 cases a year of Mohs surgery. We have three physicians on staff currently who do, and we do Mohs surgery uh, five days a week at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. We have started doing melanomas on the face with Mohs surgery. We are now currently looking at our data and our cure rates, but expect it to be at the high end of the national average of 98 to 99%. I hope this introduction to Mohs surgery has been helpful, and I look forward to meeting you and answering any further questions you have on the day of your surgery.